Welcome back to We The People University. My name is Abaya Israel, former police officer, former sheriff's deputy. You're not gonna believe this one. Today's video is brought to you by a dual collaboration from We The People University and Cop Theory. If you have not subscribed to Cop Theory's channel, please show support and go and do so. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Pittsfield Police Department located in the Pittsfield Charter Township in Michigan. I don't have a lot to say right now, but let's jump into this video where Cop Theory will also be doing commentary. Let's check this out. A $400,000 lawsuit has been filed against an officer in Michigan. The lawsuit claims that the officer caused emotional damage to a 10-year-old boy. It all started from an incident that happened at the mall. The boy and his father were asked to leave the mall area because police were conducting an investigation. But according to the officers, the kid's dad then drove out of the mall the wrong way down a one-way street and then took them on a high-speed chase going over 100 miles an hour with the boy in the car. Eventually, the police were finally able to pull him over. Whoa. Lay down. Put the phone down. Stand up, okay? Stand up. You're good. Stand up. I got you. Hey, you're good. You're good. All right. Stand up. I got you. You're going to be okay. Stand up. Imagine being 10 years old, being chased down by the police, not even it being your fault. Then they draw their weapons on you, but then start telling you, I got you. You're going to be okay. At this point, my take is this. When the cop first shows up, he draws the gun on a 10 year old child. He was able to articulate the fact that he knew that this was a child. He was not in danger. And he was also able to articulate the fact that he knew this kid was holding a phone and not a weapon. Also, I'm glad that this kid was able to state out loud so the camera can hear it that, hey, I'm scared. At this point, there is no danger for the officer. So once the child stood up off of the ground, there was no need for handcuffs. And initially, even though your gun is drawn due to the situation until you figure things out, what you did know factually was this. That was a kid, he had a phone, and he presented no danger to you or any officer on that scene. I got you. You're going to be okay. The psychological scars resulting from police use of force can be devastating even if it doesn't result in PTSD. I got you. I'm gonna detain you for right now, okay? The officer now detains the 10 year old boy and puts him in handcuffs. You can actually hear his father screaming that he wasn't running from the cops. Let me get every phone that's set on the ground so we don't break it, all right? Oh my god, he's actually. I didn't even run from you! I didn't even run from you! Are you okay? It's oh, fine, he's come off just as easy, alright? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Sorry, now we got okay. to detain car secure. Man. Is there anything in fact we need to know about? No, no, nothing. Alright. You can check. You're okay, alright? Who's in the car with you? It's your dad? Okay. Do you, do you know why he took off running? Huh? You know why you took off running? No. You got it, I can't breathe. Alright, he's gonna be okay too. Don't worry about it, alright? At this point, the boy is scared. He's confused. I mean, his muscles are getting all tense and he starts to shiver. High levels of adrenaline can actually lead to muscles twitching uncontrollably, panting, and this is going to be a memory that he will never forget. He's probably going to grow up scared of the badge, but I do think the officer eventually starts to handle this a little better. You're okay. Everything's going to be fine. No. I'm scared. Everything's gonna be good. Don't worry about it. I'm right? really scared. For you, it's out on James L. We're so. gonna take the patch off and enter out the building Metro East. The detail will be on. This is the moment the boy's father realizes his own son is in handcuffs. Can I call him? Yep, we'll let you make some phone calls in the store. He's okay. He's okay. He's alright. Do me a favor. Let's go over to the side of the car, okay? Where's your mom at? She's at home. Okay. Alright. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Here, let's go over to my car and we'll get you out of those handcuffs, alright? He's coming okay. out, you know, that's good. I was actually just taking him over to the car to do it. <laughs> So far, the officer has done a good job at de-escalating the situation. It just sucks that this kid has to go to sleep thinking about this. Maybe not even being able to go to sleep and having that fear that one day 
this might happen again. I too agree that the officer did try really hard to de-escalate the situation afterward, but I do think this is motivated by the fact that he knows a big lawsuit is coming. All right, you're good. Do you want to call your mom? Yeah. All right, we can call your mom. You want to have a seat right there on the yeah, curb? Go inside, go inside, go inside, yeah, he's doing a good job. I mean, I, I just don't think the handcuffing was crazy. He's 10. You're, you're good. You can stand. You can say it. it's up to you. I get it. Like, is there an age limit, you know? I mean, what's the age limit? Yes. Can you handcuff, like, a five-year-old? I got to come pick up. It's crazy. What is it? Huron Street? Huron the Street? The Kroger on Huron Street in 94. Nine, Kroger on Huron Street 94. What do you mean? What's going on? My dad got pulled over. Oh, my mother God. Wait, I, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm coming from here. She told him I'm on my way. Okay, just tell, just tell her everything's okay. He's all right. Okay. So just... Hurry, but don't hurry, okay? We don't want you to get into an accident. I do want to mention that the reason why there's so many cop cars is not only for the man who was just pulled over, but there was also an unrelated shooting incident that took place, and that's why all the cops are trying to get everyone out of there in the first place. According to Media Live Group, this incident occurred on April 16th when the boy's father drove him to Brianwood Mall where there was an investigation into an unrelated shooting. And Arbor police told the father to leave the area. Guys, remember the fact that this guy is saying to the officers, I was not running from you. It's important to remember that part at the end of this video. Okay, he's, he's okay. Here on Street where? Here on Street where? Here on Street 94, we're at the Kroger. Um, I would hate to get a call. You at know, the like, Kroger by... Uh, that calls. Oh, okay. Donald's. There's a uh, powerhouse the gym. At least he's alive. A man. shell station. We're right behind the shell station. It's good, you know. Maybe worse to get okay, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Okay, and your son's or fine. Or there's worse calls to be made. I'm sorry than this. Okay. Y'all good? You need a water or anything? You thirsty? Yeah. Gatorade? Hey, can you? I'm gonna grab him a drink. Okay. You want a Gatorade or a water? Gatorade. Alright. Thank you. Yep. He's really, he's really trying to make it up. You know? Uh, can you? It's a, it's a bag in the car and it's green and Yep. It's my grandma's gift. <laughs> I never, I never yeah, we'll make sure we get everything for you. They're going to have to do some things with the uh, car just because, you know, what happened. Okay. Honestly, this officer is doing a great job. I think if he wouldn't have drawn his weapon and handcuffed him, this lawsuit would have blew out of the water. I don't know. What do you guys think? I also agree. Had the officer not aimed his weapon at this child, had the officer not handcuffed this kid, then there would be no lawsuit. Oh. But yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make sure we get that for you. Don't worry about that. It's a uh, Huron near Whitaker. You guys all still on or no? What's that? You guys still all still on or no? I'm still on. I'm gonna be done here in a second. After this, the boy reunited with his dad and got picked up by the mother. I still believe the officer was in the wrong for drawing his weapon and handcuffing him, but I think we should hear a different side of the story. Well, let's drop back to who's responsible for this. You have a father allegedly responsible, fleeing the police at a shooting scene at 100 miles an hour the wrong sure. way. Yeah. So while we want to ask what the cop is doing, how about that jeopardy he put his son in and his life in? And yeah. now we want to blame 100%, the cop. 100%. The cop's got a duty to clear that car. Is there somebody laying on the back of the road? Somebody at Trump? Is this connected to the shooting? i got to control this scene. I don't think that officer could have been more polite Let's figure out what's going on. Clearly, there's a supervisor here saying, okay, scene's under control. It could have just let's escalated have to too. Like, if it wasn't These are split-second decisions, you know? but let's hold the father accountable for a change. Let's let's back off the cops and ask, why is the father driving away at 100 miles an hour it's on facts. a long-way I mean, street, facts. jeopardizing his son and everybody else's lives? I really love how police will spin every situation to what's always the citizen's fault. In this particular situation, it could be looked at in several different ways. One, let's be honest and let's be fair. The police do have a job to do. They hear about a shooting that's happening in a store, a location. It could be possibly an active shooter. So therefore they're going to do their best to get there and stop the suspect. Two, 
we see a car speeding away from that very scene. This could be our suspect. Why is he speeding away? Let's get to this vehicle, stop it, and find out what's going on. Three, once we see it's a kid getting out of the vehicle and he poses no threat to myself or any other officer, and all he's holding is a phone, at that point, I need not to pose a threat to him. I should not have pointed my gun at him, nor do I have to place him in handcuffs. Four, let's back up a little bit. If there's an active shooter in your area, and you have your child with you, is it so unbelievable that you may get in your car and speed away to get your child to safety? Could it be possible that this father is panicking because he has his 10 or 11 year old son with him and he does not want him to be hurt or even worse? Now, I will admit during the situation, that may not cross your mind as a police officer. You were only speeding away to protect your child. But in hindsight, 2020, Let's not start Monday morning quarterbacking and leave that part out. So whoever the spokesman was who was speaking on behalf of the department should have thought about that. Not that this guy was putting his child's life in danger by speeding away from a dangerous situation. He may have been trying to save his child's life in the only way that he knew how. As for this situation and the lawsuit at hand, let's read this. Per M Live Media Group located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The lawsuit accuses the officer of straying from Pittsfield Township Department of Public Safety Policy, stating he is trained to not place subdued children in handcuffs without probable cause or reasonable suspicion. The lawsuit lists counts of battery, assault with a deadly weapon, infliction of emotional distress, and gross negligence. Federal Magistrate Judge Kimberly Altman has yet to set a deadline for Pittsfield Township attorneys to respond to Webster Cox's complaint. There is a lawsuit filed, and we will keep an eye on this one. I also want to give a shout out to Cop Theory. Great coverage of this story. And guys, as always, make sure you know your rights. Always record the police. And if the police step on your rights, you fight them back the legal way in the courtroom. Make sure you know. With that being said, we the People University, signing off.